in this video, I'm gonna tell you the 10 things that you can do in your home right now without spending any or very little money to keep your home secure when you're sheltering in place due to the pandemic, the riots, or any SHTF situation. So let's get started. The first thing that we can do is reinforce the locks, our doors, our door jams, and remove the hardware that it was originally packaged with and install better hardware such as three inch screws to help bolt your lock with a firmer base and lock it into place so it is harder for someone to break into your house and harm your family. If you don't own a power drill, borrow one from someone and if you don't have the hardware already at home, Three inch screws are not very expensive and you can buy them at your local hardware store. That couple dollar investment is well spent if you're gonna help secure your family and keep your family safe. The next thing that we can do is honestly just lock our doors and lock our windows. I don't know how many times I visited friends and they don't lock their doors they don't lock their windows when they use them because they are comfortable, they have been living in their, in their place for a long time, or they've never have experienced a situation to where their safety was compromised. The third thing that we can do right now is to get to know our neighbors. Get to know who they are, what they do, who is there in their family, possibly what are their routines and also get their contact info or start an online neighborhood chat group because during shtf our neighbors are going to be our biggest resource not just to help keep our family safe but keep all of our property safe and our neighborhood safe in general so knowing your neighbors knowing who they are and how to contact them if there is an emergency is vital to keeping your family safe especially if you're living in a urban area because there is so many people compacted into tight spaces and whether you live in an apartment complex or a home knowing your neighbors can help minimize the amount of traffic that comes in and out of your neighborhood and help identify the people who are not supposed to be there a few years ago during Christmas time, the apartment I was renting from was broken into along with the main home property in the front. The entire property was burglarized during the middle of the day. Most smart criminals <laughs> would stake out the place that they are planning to hit and learn the routines of the people going in and out of the home to learn when is the best time to get into their home. Our neighbor noticed that there was a van sitting outside of the property and that there were unknown people coming in and out of the home. Now, being that we lived in a tight-knit community where everyone knew each other, it seemed a bit sketchy to our neighbor, so she contacted the landlord, asking her if we had anyone who was working on the property or if there was anyone doing any maintenance on the property because there was some people that were moving stuff out of the home and moving things into a van they were immediately able to identify that there was actually people who had broken in and were taking things out of our house and we were able to immediately contact the authorities and luckily those people were actually caught and not just were they taken to jail for the crime they committed but we also got our belongings back and also retrieved dozens of other gifts and expensive equipment that they had stolen from other properties as well. And it's instances like that where knowing your neighbors and having their contact information is vital to keeping your home and your property safe, whether you're home or not. Another thing that we can do this instant to help secure our family is to take walks around our neighborhood at least three times a week. 
And I know this seems very basic, but if you take walks at different times of the week, not just will you learn your neighborhood and the changes that happen because things are constantly changing. People are constantly moving. So keeping up to who is still living in the neighborhood, what their routines are, and not just is it vital to keep our community safe, but it also is a great form of exercise and keeping in shape is definitely going to be useful during SHTF. The next thing that we can do is to be mindful of when we're having items delivered to our home, specifically large packages or items that can look like they're valuable because people are always watching. Regardless if you feel that there's no one there, people always have an eye out. People are always watching and people pay attention to how many times you're coming in and out, how many cases of water you're bringing home, bringing large amounts of food, and in the COVID-19 pandemic, lots amount of toilet paper, and people will eventually put two and two together, and they know that you're stockpiling and that you have supplies, and when they don't have them, they're going to come looking for them because they know you do. So being mindful of when you bring things home. Sometimes when I bring items home, I don't even take it out of my car until the sun goes down. And that's when knowing our neighbor's routines also comes in very helpful is because you'll know when your neighbors are actually home or when they're most likely not going to be home. And you can bring stuff in in a more discreet way. And I also load those items into luggage or my packs just so that it is less obvious what I'm bringing in and out of the house. Whereas if you were just bringing in a bunch of grocery bags or boxes full of items, it's very easy for it to look like you're just coming back from a weekend trip. And regardless of who you have in your neighborhood, so whether it's a new neighbor or a neighbor that you've known for 20 years or even a friend that you've had for many years, that doesn't necessarily mean that they can be trusted and ultimately the only person that you can trust is yourself. The next thing that we can begin to do right now if you're not already doing it is to obtain some free palettes. Free palettes are your best friend when it comes to SHTF because we can all go out to the hardware store or our local Home Depot and purchase some plywood and purchase some two by fours to close up and board up our doors and windows. However, why would we do that when we can get the same items for free? Many online apps such as OfferUp or LetGo or even Craigslist have an abundance of people who are giving away their free stuff. And in that free stuff is a bunch of pallets and wood that can be repurposed and reused to secure your home when SHTF comes knocking at our door. Now you can get pallets in many different sizes, but most of them are constructed with plywood, two by fours, one by threes, or various board sizes. Now you are gonna have to put in a little bit of work to break down the pallets, to loosen up the nails. And of course, none of us just want to have a bunch of pallets lying around the house or anywhere, but there are plenty of creative DIY ideas online where you can make pallets look beautiful and create some lovely living spaces with the pallets themselves so they don't have to be an eyesore. Thorn vine plants have been used through the beginning of time as natural fencing. Thorn vines actually provide a lot of security, roses, or Osage Orange, which was used as a natural barrier and as a natural fencing all throughout history. Another natural fencing that you could use is cactus because of its prickiness and people would never want to walk through cactus if they didn't have to. Cactus is multifunctional because it provides you with food. Now, although not a lot of us like cactus, myself included, my grandma used to make me eat it when I was little <laughs> and I don't like it very much, but it is a great food source with tons of nutrients and you, you better believe that an SHTF, if there's cactus around and I'm starving, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> and I pretty sure that a lot of you would as well. Now, not just does cactus provide that security and food, but it also blossoms some beautiful flowers and it even provides us with fruit. 
some cactus pears. Now, not a lot of people know you can eat these um, once you remove the outer layer and the prickliness. Not just does cactus provide a great prickly barrier, but it can be grown with very little water, which is essential when you don't have a plentiful water source. And it can be let to grow wild or also be guided in the way in which you want it to grow. So these natural ways of, of providing barriers to your property are great. It also provides a great morale booster because you're looking at a beautiful plant instead of an ugly gate. My 10th and final security tip is developing your situational awareness. Now, no matter our level of experience, we can all use constant practice of our situational awareness. Now we can achieve this in many different ways. One way being mindful meditation to my personal favorite, which is putting it into practice. So I believe as women, we have all grown up with those messages of, of just be, being more mindfully aware when we make decisions that could potentially be dangerous for us. However, we are not all as in tune as we can be with our situational awareness. And in this day and age, when we're constantly on our phones, we are not being mindfully aware. We're walking around, texting, listening to music, watching videos. A whole circumstance could have developed around you that you weren't mindful of. The best way to practice situational awareness is to actually put yourself in a circumstance where you have to be more mindfully aware. Having a friend surprise you, come at you from a direction at a time and place where you're not expecting it. And even if it's staged, have it be a surprise and it's, de it's definitely going to develop the senses and bring more clarity and sharpness each time that the circumstance happen. You can plan it as often as you like. But it's not until you're actually put in a circumstance where you are in a real life threat that you really see how much adrenaline kicks in and how much it makes a difference in the choices that we make and in the way that people respond. And I do say that with personal experience. And it's not going to be something that's going to be developed overnight, uh, but it's definitely good to practice just to see how you would personally react to being placed in a circumstance where it is potentially dangerous for you and you were in physical danger. And of course, you know, we're all going to feel comfortable because we know that the person who is doing the exercise with us as someone we trust and someone we, we believe can do this with us. And you guys can help each other <laughs> and alternate, you know, and so that you can both practice to help us develop that muscle memory, develop that intuition that not everyone has. So if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, make sure that you like and also subscribe to my channel and stay tuned and up to date on all of the newest content and everything to do with preparedness and SHTF from a female perspective.